Welcome back to another video of my AP Calc Champions. In this problem, we're going to be talking about medication. So, a medication is administered to a patient. The amount in milligrams of the medication in the patient at time t hours is modeled by the function y equals a of t. That satisfies the differential equation dy over dt is equal to 12 minus y over 3. At time t equals 0 hours, there are 0 milligrams of the medication in the patient. Then we're given a slope field for part A for the differential equation, and we want to sketch the solution curve through the point 0, 0. We know that our solution curve is going gonna, is gonna to touch the point 0, 0, so we're going to go ahead and start there. And then we're just going to follow we're just going to follow the slope as we're just going to follow the slope field from that point to this asymptote. So we know that we're not going to touch. Uh, y equals 12 because at that point the derivative is undefined. We want to make sure that this solution curve is increasing and concave down and that it is approaching but it is not touching y equals 12. Something else to point out, you might notice that above y equals 12 there's slopes there as well so you might be tempted to sketch the rest of it however that would not be correct. The reason why is we are never going to reach up above here for our differential equation. We're never going to get greater than y equals 12 because there's an asymptote at that point. All right, next question actually asks us about that asymptote. So it says, using correct units, interpret the statement that the limit as t approaches infinity, a of t is equal to 12 in the context of this problem. So what is a of t again? It's the amount in milligrams of the medication in the patient at time t hours. We know that the amount of medication in the patient is going to approach y equals 12, equals 12 milligrams, I guess, in, in the context of the problem, but it's never quite going to reach it. So it means that as time gets infinitely large, the amount of medication in the patient approaches 12 milligrams. So the key points that you're going to want to include in your answer here is as time gets infinitely large and then also the amount of medication in the patient approaches 12 milligrams. So we've got our units, we've got that it only approaches it, it doesn't reach 12 milligrams, and we also mentioned that our time is getting infinitely large. Moving on to part C, it says use separation of variables to find y equals a of t. The particular solution to the differential equation dy over dt is equal to 12 minus y over 3. With initial condition, a of 0 is equal to 0. So we're separating our variables. Right now, we have a dy and a y on opposite sides. So we're going to want to sort of sort that out. So we can go ahead and multiply both sides across like this. So we get 3dy is equal to 12 minus y dt. Our dy and our y are still on opposite sides of the equal sign. So now let's go ahead and divide this side by 3 and this side by 12 minus y. So we get dy over 12 minus y is equal to dt over 3. Okay, cool. So now we have our dy and our y on the same side. And then we have dt. It doesn't seem like we have any terms that have t in them. So it's okay that we just have dt on it by itself here. So now what we're going to want to do is remember that we're finding y of a of t. And right now we have it in terms of dy and dt. So we're going to want to take the integral of both sides. So on the left side, we can use u substitution to figure out what our integral is. So we can say u is equal to 12 minus y and du is equal to minus dy. So now we can go ahead and plug that in. So we get 1 over uh, u times du. And then since we didn't have a negative dy, we're going to have to pop a negative out front so that it matches our substitution. And then on this side, we still have dt over 3. Uh, so we can go ahead and take the integral. So we know that the integral of 1 over u is going to be ln of u. So we'll have our negative out front. And then we know that the integral of dt over 3 is just going to be t over 3. And then we need to include our constant of integration, so plus c. So we still need to substitute our u back in 
for our left side. So let's go ahead and do that. So this is going to be 12 minus y is equal to t over 3 plus c. So we still have a c. We're going to want to get rid of that by solving for it. So we have been given a point, and the point is basically 0, 0. So we can go ahead and plug that into this equation to solve for t. So we get minus ln 12 minus 0 is equal to 0 over 3 plus c. So what I was doing there is plugging in 0 for y and 0 for t. So we get minus ln of 12 is equal to c. So we have solved for c here. So we can go ahead and plug that into our equation. So we get minus ln 12 minus y equal to t over 3 minus ln 12. We've gotten it such that we don't have any integrals we need to take and we solve for a constant of integration. But now remember, we were actually just trying to solve for y equals a of t. And right now our left side has a bit more than just y. So we're going to want to get rid of the ln and the 12. So let's go ahead and get rid of our negative first. So we divide both sides by negative 1. So here, the sign of our ln is going to change to be positive, And then the sign of our t divided by 3 is going to change to a negative. So that's what we have now. Now we want to get rid of our ln. So we can go ahead and take both sides to the power of e. So what's going to happen is when you do that, this is going to cancel out. So now we have 12 minus y is equal to e to the ln of 12 minus t over 3. On the left side, we still don't only have just y. So what we're going to want to do is add y to the other side. So we get 12 equals e to the ln 12 minus t over 3 plus y. And then we subtract this from our right side so that we have just y on the left side. So we get 12 minus e to the ln 12 minus t over 3 is equal to y. So now we have actually finally solved for our y. If we wanted to, we can go ahead and simplify this statement here by saying y is equal to 12 minus, we just drop the 12 down here, and then we still have our e to the negative t over 3. And that is our final answer for this problem. Let's go ahead and move on to part d. This one says a different procedure is used to administer the medication to a second patient. The amount in milligrams of medication the second patient at time t hours is modeled by the function y equals b of t. That satisfies the differential equation d of y over dt is equal to 3 minus y over t plus 2. At the time t equals 1 hour, there are 2.5 milligrams of medication in the second patient. Is the rate of change of the amount of medication in the second patient increasing or decreasing at time t equals 1? Give a reason for your answer. Right, so we're being asked if the rate of change in the amount of medication in the second patient is increasing or decreasing. So what that means is we're probably going to want to be taking a derivative, okay? So when it says that at time t equals one hour, there is 2.5 milligrams of medication, we can kind of think of that as that's a point within our equation B of t. So this is going to be time, this is going to be milligrams of medication. So that'll be helpful for us later on. So we have dy over dt is equal to 3 minus y over t plus 2. So let's go ahead and take the second derivative. So the 3 is going to go away because it's just a constant. And then we're left with minus y over t plus 2. So notice that this is set up in such a way that we can use our quotient rule. So we can set y equal to, or minus y equal to u of x. And then we can set t plus 2 equal to v of x, and then we can just go ahead and use the quotient rule. So we're going to take the derivative of minus y, so it's going to be minus dy over dt times t plus 2 minus, we're just keeping our y the same, so minus y, and then we're multiplying it by the derivative of t plus 2, which is just going to be 1, all over t plus 2 squared. Let's go ahead and simplify a little bit. So a minus and a minus is going to be a positive, and then we're just multiplying by 1, so we're just going to have plus y over here. Now we have it in terms of t and y, but unfortunately we also have this dy over dt. We're going to have to plug in this point into our dy dt equation so that we can simplify this second derivative that we have here. So dy dt at 1 comma 2.5 is equal to 3 minus 2.5 over 1 plus 2. So I'm just plugging in 1 for t and 2.5 for y. 
So we would get 3 minus 2.5 over 3. So now we can go ahead and plug that into our second derivative equation so that we can get the second derivative at 1 comma 2.5. So that's going to be negative 3 minus 2.5 over 3 times t plus 2. So we're setting our t equal to 1. So 1 plus 2 plus our y is 2.5 all over t plus 2 squared. So 1 plus 2 squared. So this is going to be minus 3 minus 2.5 times 3 plus 2.5 all over 9. So this 3 and this 3 cancel out, so we get minus 9 plus 2.5 plus 2.5 all over 9. So then 2.5 plus 2.5 is 5, plus minus 9 is negative 4 all over 9. So our second derivative is negative, and using our concept of what a negative second derivative means, that means that our rate of change is decreasing at the point one, two. So we can go ahead and write that out. The rate of change of the amount of medication is decreasing because d2 of y over dt squared is minus four over nine less than zero at the point one comma 2.5. And that should be about it for this problem. Hopefully this video helps you out with this AP calculus problem. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below and I'll get back to you. And I hope you have a great rest of your day.